Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I think we're live. All right. So tonight we're uh, going to do some painting. Well, I'm going to do some painting. I don't know what you guys are going to do. Let me know. Let me know what you're going to do. So I had this idea for streaming tonight to try and paint up one of my Malifaux minions in two hours, which I think for some of you guys is probably not much of a challenge, but it is for me because I'm quite slow. <laughs> I, uh, I don't have any speed paints or contrast paints. I just have regular slow ass paints and some of my paints are pretty crap and are pretty crap to coverage, which uh, has uh, caused me problems previously. Uh, so those are the challenges I have. I'm slow and I have bad equipment. And as you know, you always got to blame the equipment. It's always the paint's fault. It's not, it's not my fault. So that's what I'm going to try and do tonight. I'm going to try and paint a mini in two hours. One of my Malifaux minis. And the specific one is the lightning bug. So, uh, let's have a look at, um, a look at him. Just turn my light on and switch over to the, the guy here. So this is him. So this is a lightning bug from uh, Whizbang. Uh, so one of Wong's minions. He's really cool. Uh, I like him a lot. He's just like a gremlin he's in wizard robes. And he's got a wand that is got some sort of spell coming out from it. So this is who I'm going to paint up. Obviously I've uh, <clears throat> given a Xanathal Prime already, so that's already accounted for. And the way I'm going to paint him up is pretty close to the artwork. So he's going to be green. He's going to have this sort of, uh, what do you call it, teal? A teal um, magic color. And then his robes are going to be that red color. So that's how I'm planning on painting him up. And uh, yeah, I thought this could be some fun. I've been watching um, Sam Lenz's videos on wet blending and how to do it. So I'm going to try and channel that and actually uh, learn how to paint quick. Because uh, the way he does is it does it is it as his like base coat he wet blends everything and he does it really fast so we'll see if we can do that somehow i doubt it considering i haven't really practiced it much but uh we will see so i'm about to get started and uh yeah try and do it in two hours so i've got uh most of my stuff ready let me just make sure i'm all Sort it out before I start the timer. Don't want to waste time getting set up. So I think I have a pretty good handle on the, the paints I'm going to use. I sort of pre-selected a bunch that I think will be my my colors of choice, and I'm probably with the order of the colors going to go his skin and then robes and. Um, then the uh, the wand and the magic last probably, and then I'll do all the highlights. And then at the end, I'll try and sort of OSL the wand a little bit if I can. Not that I really know what I'm doing there, but that is the plan. So we shall see how it goes. I'm excited for this. I think this could be could be fun to do. Okay, so skin first. That's going to be um, Angel Green from Army Painter, which is the same as what I did in my, my video that I put up about painting um, Bay Gremlins. So we are pretty much just going to copy that for the skin. I'm not going to do anything new there. All right, it's 7.05, so I'm going to start in one second, I think, and just get some paints on the board to 
pretend. I'm pretending this is not painting time. No, I'm preparing colors. Okay. So let's uh, start the clock. All right, 7.05, so I'll go to 9.05 and see what we can do. And start with the skin. So let me know if I ever um, move out of the camera. But uh, if I can, I'm going to try and wet blend as well, like how Sam Lens does it. I don't know if that's going to work, but uh, it might. All right, yeah. I haven't actually tried to paint fast in quite a while, so maybe I'm better at painting now and it will be easier. I'm not sure. <laughs> Defective dye seems like cheating to me. Getting the paints ready. Well, I only did the green. I haven't um I haven't done the all the paints. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see my palette, but it's already well, actually, not my palette, but uh, these greens I actually don't like. I like my um, my monument hobbies, the practical green, but these army painters greens I have, I kind of dislike. They kind of have like pretty awful t coverage, which was a real issue for me on um, a lot of times with with painting the green is that they have so bad, such bad coverage that I've had to do tons and tons of coats, especially with that angel green. And that's like really slowed down my paint jobs. So, um, we'll see how we go. So I'm actually just trying to, cause I'm kind of, I've done a few gremlins now. I'm just trying to go straight in with the shade and then the base coat. So like I'm going shade kind of color underneath and then the uh, the lighter color on the above surfaces. So normally I would layer it. So normally I would start with the the darkest color and do you know two or three coats of the base coat, and then go over the top with the lighter color. And I'm going to try and be your fancy and skip that and just go straight to the color that I actually want. I don't know if it's going to work or if it's going to completely screw me over. Um, but clearly, like, trying to do a speed paint challenge is the perfect time when you should be experimenting with your painting methods, right? So I always say, it's no time, like, live on YouTube when you should be trying out new things for the very first time. But uh, we'll see what happens. He actually doesn't have that much skin on this guy. He's pretty, um, pretty minimal. Obviously his red cloak is the predominant color. And that's, uh, that's, um, be interesting because I haven't really painted much red, especially not recently. But we'll see what happens. Hmm. Okay, I might switch to a different color to let that dry because I don't have a hair dryer to speed things up. Why Malifaux as opposed to one of the other games? As Sean, um, mostly mostly athletic aesthetics for me. So, I oh, can I get this paint out? Maybe. What has happened? It's like clogged up. Technical issues here. So mostly um, mostly aesthetics. So I just really love these like silly gremlins in the bayou. There's just like so much humor in um, in this faction the baby faction i just love it like these guys are just like they're wizards but they have no idea what they're doing so they're all like um just 
sort of messing about and uh, explosions are happening and they don't know. So it's it's mostly aesthetic. So like you've got, let's waste my time. I don't waste my time, but I'm wasting, yeah. So this is another lightning bug and she's like casting a spell and it's like turning back on her and she has like no idea what's happening. So I just love it. I love how funny the models are. Um, and like the sort of Victorian 19th century vibe. It's, it's cool. So uh, that's that's one of the really cool things about Malifaux. I also, the rules are free, which is nice. It means I can sort of like get into it. And with Warhammer, I have like a bunch of Warhammer minis, but I, I like watched how to play videos and stuff, but like to get into the game properly, it's so like maybe into Warcry or Kill Team, I'd have to like buy two or three books. And to do that without even knowing if I like the game, or if I have people to play with and stuff, and I don't know, it's a, it's a bit hard. Hello, Mr. Zealous. How's it going? Effective dice. Red is a highlight, a pain to highlight. Uh, I guess we will find out because I have um, not really done it before, but uh, we will know soon enough. I've got, so what I've got is I've got a black, I don't have a dark red color, but I've got a, um, a black, like a red, and then a sort of reddy orange. And I don't know if you saw the artwork before, but the, the cloak is sort of like a dark red. It's not a super bright red. It doesn't go up to like orange or pink or anything. I'm going to try and keep it sort of in that zone between like black and red. Um, sort of like a deep, deep color the whole time. That's the plan at least. Hi, Michael. Hi, Sean. Oh, yeah. So Sean says me too. So, okay. So you like the aesthetic as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just cool vibe. So Mr. Zeller says the same thing. The, the setting and look. Yeah. Um, it's just fun. It's different. It's, uh, um, I don't know. I like the, the whole 19th century aspect of it. Well, I guess it's technically 20th century now in the law, right? But, uh, the look is very Victorian. So I'm just going back in with angel green underneath the, uh, on the bottom of the greens because my angel green has really bad coverage, really, really bad. So I'm slowly transitioning away from uh, some of my old paints. So I've been getting into Proacryl recently and I really like the coverage on them. Um, but I'm also gonna try some P3 paints at some point. There's a YouTuber called Mr. Shy Guy that Mr. Shy, who really likes, he's a really great painter and he really likes Mr. Um, P3 and Vallejo, Vallejo, however you say that. I know it's Spanish and I I messed up the pronunciation just then. Um, but he really likes those two, so I'm gonna get some of them at, uh, at some point as well to try out, to sort of spread my wings a bit. Michael, I love painting red. I use Vallejo fluorescent red to help. Right, I have uh, not seen that. Is that like a special, like it's got a special property or is it just like the name of the color? Like it's actually like super shiny or something. So I'm not used to doing this because I'm painting sort of like wet paint on wet paint. And I don't know if this is gonna be brilliant or if this is a disaster that's coming down at me. So I think I should stop and uh, maybe go to another color and come back again. Unfortunately, there's not many colors apart from red and uh, red kind of relies on the green to be done a bit. So I might just have to keep going with the green a bit. The idea is I'll do all this sort of like roughly and then at some point I'll come back in and put in like little shades and highlights. 
There's so many um, folds in this guy's cloak, so that's going to take ages. Christopher Boggs? Yeah, I just can't get into Grim Dark as an aesthetic, but I love most of the Malifaux vibe. Yeah, I... 40k is a bit too... too much. Uh, I remember when I was young, I was into 40k for like six months, and when I... that was like early 2000s, it must have been. And I recall at the time that there was like a lot of humor. I remember there was a lot of humor in it. Uh, and like silliness of like how silly some of it was. I'm not sure if that's still there. It doesn't feel like it. So I think the only real factions that interest me in 40k is like the orcs, really. The others are kind of... Yeah, they're all right. I like um, Nature Sigma, I like... Uh... Carrot and Overlords and um, Gloom Spike Kids. Um, so yeah, I just have a thing for funny, ridiculous models in uh, war games, apparently. So <laughs> uh, yeah, and I really like the Bay in in Malifaux. All right, um, Mr. Zealous. Much easier to get into Malifaux in terms of rules, model count, and terrain objective mark. Yeah, I think that's the thing with the free rules. It's It lets you sort of like mess around with it by yourself. Even, you know, you could just use tokens or whatever. Pieces of paper as the actual um, models or whatever. Like you don't have to buy anything to, to give it a go. Um, but, you know, I bought, I bought the starter box and... Uh, Ophelia Core Box, they started in the Ophelia Core Box, and I had more than 50 Soul Stones. So just those two boxes, I've got a deck, and I've got more than, you know, a full crew. And, like, that's pretty different compared to an army game. So that's that's cool. Um, and it's, yeah, it comes with deck, it comes with uh, markers and things as well. So that's neat. And uh, I, I like as well that in Malifaux, you've got the core rules, which sort of tell you how the game works. But then everything you need to know about your crew is on the cards. So if you've got the game, like, well memorized, all you need to look at is the cards. And from what I've seen of other game systems, a lot of them you have to keep going back to various rule books to, like, look up special rules and things. Which, uh... I've got a pretty terrible memory, so that's not going to be fun for me. Just for you saying, I've been trying to branch out into Infinity, but they're just not as fun to paint as these dudes. Armor suits and combi rifles get a little monotonous. Mo monotonous. Yeah, I, uh, I, um, I watched some Malifaux st uh, Infinity stuff because some of the guys. Like uh, Corner Case, deck from Corner Case, and that Mr. Shy. They do Infinity content. But it's just that that sort of... Um, that style of sci-fi doesn't really do it for me. It's too clean or something. And uh, yeah, it just... The aesthetics don't, don't grab me. But I've heard it's a good game. They say it's, they're fun to paint, but yeah. The aesthetics don't do it for me. Mick Bluff, hello. Hello to you as well. How are you doing? So what are you guys uh, doing tonight? Or whatever time it is in your corner of the world? Pretty sure... Defective dice. You're not British, are you? I'm terrible with accents, but from what I remember of your channel, you're not British, you're American, right? This must be uh, afternoon now, is it? I don't know. All right, I think the green is at a point that I can go onto... The, uh, the red now, which is going to be interesting. Def 
effective dice. I love painting infinity, but I can see how it can get repetitive. Foe has a ton of variety. Yeah, foe's really uh, so much variety, which can be a bit jarring because there's, you know, you get the bay and then you get like 10 thunders. They're kind of all over the place. Uh, it's not too, it's not super cohesive, but then I like that there's tons of variety. All right, so let's try and do the red now. We'll see what happens. People saying it's going to be a hard color. But, uh, yeah. So I don't really have a proper dark red. So I'm just going to go some black and uh, mix it in. See what happens. Because, yeah, if we go back to the uh, artwork... That's not the artwork. This is the artwork. It's quite a deep red. And I was actually looking at this. I was using the color inspector and the shadows they've used for those reds are actually like a green black. Just, I thought it was kind of cool because that's like the contrasting color to red. So they've mixed a little bit of green into that black uh, on the shadows of the cloak. My eye like didn't pick it up, but the color picker did. But I'm not gonna bother with that because that's a bit too fancy for me. Uh, I'm just going to make a dark red with some black. And I think um, I think this black probably has a bit of green in it or something as well. Who knows? All right, let's see how we go. That's a pretty dark, it's a pretty dark red. So much, uh, so much cloak. I love that this model basically has like these few surfaces and then um, there's not tons of like dribblies. And that is actually an issue I had with carriage on overlords. I was I've been painting them up and there's just like so many dribblies on their armor. And it takes forever and it's kind of killed my enthusiasm for painting my my carajons because they were kind of like the when i got back into painting as an adult those were actually the first ones i bought with some carajon overlords i know but i've come to realize that they take freaking ages because they have so many like little bits on them and uh that's um kind of a pain in the ass So I always want to call you de Detective Dice instead of Defective Dice, sadly. But a Defective Dice is in New York. Are you in New York City or in New York State? Because I've never been to America. I mean, I've never been to North America. I've been to South America once. Uh, which is cool. Um, 2.30 p.m. 7.30, so it's five hour time difference. Right, right, right. So, it's not too bad. Christopher Boggs, still, still working here. East Coast US as well. Glad to have something to watch as I toil away. <laughs> yeah, I used to do this when I was, well, I'm still working from home, but um, I haven't seen anyone streaming while I'm during my work day. But yeah, I was doing that at some point. Um, just had the stream on while I was working. Uh, it was quite nice. And, um, pleasant. So no one's, no one's painting. We're all, everyone's working. It's, uh, I don't know if you guys know it, but it's like the Queen's Jubilee, Jubilee weekend thing. I think it was yesterday. They had a big flyover with uh, military planes and stuff in London. And then um, tons of events on and things. And uh, today, so that was a day off. That was a public 
special public holiday. And then today is um, May public holiday. So there's like a public holiday at the end of May every year and they combine them. So yeah, yesterday was Queen's Jubilee public holiday and today was May public holiday. And that is why I have been streaming two days in a row because uh, yeah, it's been um, it's been some time off and uh, my girlfriend's been away visiting our friend. So I've got plenty of free time. box the variety is really a draw for me to Malifaux like I'm not really into the 10 thunders aesthetic but I love that it's there for s people who really dig it yeah yeah I uh there's a lot of Malifaux stuff that I don't care for like a lot of the uh more monstrous stuff like Neverborn and um Resurrectionists I don't like I just I've never been into that sort of stuff but um, I think that it's gives people something in uh, to that they enjoy which is um just cool and as I get more into Malifaux I sometimes I go back to look at masters that I haven't looked at in ages and then I actually like like them a lot more than originally um, Maybe you just get like a better second impression or whatever. That's happened to me a few times. Yeah. I would uh, I would do like a tier ranking, but that seems kind of silly to just be like doing a ranking system of just shit I like. No like actual reasoning behind it other than I think it looks cool. So, Mick Bluff. Sorry, I was a bit behind. I'm doing all right. Happy to watch some Malifaux painting. How are you? I'm doing well. I, uh, as I was saying, it's pretty public holiday, so I've had a pretty chill day. Uh, doing mm, not much. I made the thumbnail for tonight's stream. That's always fun, doing thumbnails, trying to make them look good. Um, and apart from that, I've just been hanging out with our dog. Huey. I don't think I did really anything today. I was so exhausted. You know, yesterday when I was streaming, my voice was um, was really going at the end because I've been kind of sick a little bit. Like this low-key something. It's been really um, annoying me for the last couple of weeks. Like it's, uh, I don't know, sort of like a cold or something. It's not COVID. I did a test, but... Yeah, that was like killing my voice. So hopefully that doesn't happen again today, today's stream. I think I won't be talking as much. So yeah, I'm trying to do like a very dark red for the super shadowy bits and a slightly dark red for the bits of the red here that are highlighted. And I'm just trying to channel my inner Sam lens and kind of try and just slap this on. I'm not really wet blending because all the dark red is dried. So I'm kind of just putting it in areas and I'm I'm hoping to fix this up later. So I've never really tried this style of painting before. But always I would have done the entire cloak in uh, dark, dark red. And then I would have layered up um, each, each bit, you know, to medium red, then like a lighter red sort of thing. So I'd have, you know, done like tons and tons of coats on each, on, on the really highlighted part to bring it up. So with this, I'm trying to just start sort of close to the color that I want it to be. Hopefully it'll work and not just be a disaster. But who knows? Detective dice, I like it. I'm a bit outside the city. Cool. Though I guess a bit outside the city because it's such a massive city. 
it's that's actually a long way out. This uh New York's big. London's big as well. I'm moving to Manchester in a few weeks actually. Which I'm pretty excited about because my yeah, you know, my girlfriend and I we used to live in Manchester a few years ago. So we're going back to like um very close where we used to live and stuff. So it's gonna it kind of feels like it's going Yeah, back to somewhere that we're very comfortable with. So we're really excited about that. London's a bit too big for me. Christopher Box. Also, you're one of the like three people in my lifetime who have pronounced my last name correctly. I feel like you feel like you should win a prize, lol. Boggs. How do other people say it? That can't be right. Is uh that's um I don't know. It seems like a pretty normal name. Well not normal, I guess, but like like it's a word, like bog. It's an English word, unless you're maybe not English or something. I don't know. That surprises me a lot why people can't say your last name. I'm not too confident in this, like, this red mixing I'm doing. I think I'm, I'm messing up the color placement a fair bit here. But we just got to paint bravely as a... Uh, as they say on podcasts. <laughs> Sean, you're from Austin, Texas. Hello. I literally picked Honey Pot at random and I'm painting my third mini. My first one was hilariously bad. So have you getting to Malifaux without um, painting anything at, at all before, Sean? Um, so I actually think... Malifaux minis are pretty easy to paint. I gotta say, I, uh, oh, oh, I just fucked that. Okay, well, as I said it, I just made a mistake. But, see, on a YouTube video, I can just edit that out. And you would never know. But, uh, no luck this time. Um, I actually think Malifaux minis are really fun to paint, easy to paint compared to GW, you know, at least in my experience of the, the GW minis I've painted and the Malifaux minis I've painted. I found this, um, I've been painting up the Ophelia keyword, really, really pleasant to paint, a lot of fun. This whiz bang model is tons of fun. It's so many like cool surfaces and no little gribbly bits which is uh, good good to do. What I found with painting is the more I get into painting, the more I like doing volumes. It's like this big flowing cloak thing. It can be like a lot of fun to highlight up. But um, my character on Overlord is the same before, but they just have so many little like bits of pipes and gizmos and shit hanging on them that you have to like hit individually with like a bit of color and it's really like sort of a pain in the ass so um where are we looking i think that's most of the color blocked in probably need to do another coat because uh there's probably bits in this and that color is completely wrong <laughs> Yeah, so most of my British friends, Chris, are moaning about how over the Jubilee they are at this point. I've been pretty much ignoring it. Um, but yes, I did see the flyover, which was pretty sick. Um, and turns out we went to like the Duke of Wellington's house, which is kind of like funny to sort of go to like that because they're just going on about how he's the greatest like military commander the English have ever had the British and then we went on like a full-on patriotic day the Jubilee but uh anyway but uh, I haven't really been paying attention to the Jubilee stuff so 
hasn't affected me too much. Technically, she is the Queen of in uh, Australia. So I don't know if they're doing Jubilee situation uh, celebrations in Australia at the moment or not. Probably not. They probably have like a little thing, but nothing like over here where it's wild. Defective dice. I've had that happen a lot where I take a second look at a master and I like them a lot more. Some of my favorite masters I didn't care for until I read their lore and now I love them. Yeah. Some of your videos actually. If anyone hasn't seen Defective Dice's videos, you should check them out. It does lore stuff. But um, uh, watching your videos, sometimes I get like a new appreciation for a master. Or like a master that I've looked at and been like, oh yeah, they look okay. Their lore is like super cool. Yeah. Sean says, when I visited Manchester, everyone seemed like Christopher Eccleston. I actually know who that is. That's the, that was one of the doctors, right? Um, see, I remember names. Um, yeah, I don't know much about him, but I'm pretty sure he was one of the doctors. <laughs> That's my some knowledge of him. It's, it's interesting. There's lots of dodgy parts of Manchester, but there's some good parts as well. And we're moving to the good part and we're gonna be right near the element games and if you guys have watched like some european youtubers you've probably seen them promote element games and that's gonna be like right near where i live so i'm pretty keen for that what should i do now should i keep going with the red i feel like i should keep going with the red because that's such an important color for this mini i think i need to give him more redness um <clears throat> Michael says, I missed most of this. We'll probably go back and rewatch later. Malifaux minis are really good to paint. Very few flat bits. And loads of interesting character. Even a basic paint job looks good. Yeah. Yeah, so like this is going to be, what, four colors? And I think it's going to come out looking really cool. Um, because there's just the volumes. And I think once you get like the light volumes into them, they just end up looking... Um, Super, super interesting, and vibrant. Like uh, what I did with the my bay painting guide. Like I just loved how green and vibrant he came out when I just added more and more highlights. I just kept going further with the highlights, further than I thought was like gonna work, and it just kept getting better and better. So um, I was secretly pretty happy with that paint job because I'm not a very advanced painter or anything myself so that was yeah I was really happy with how it came out um, I was trying to put some shadows back into this a bit I'm just gonna keep basically keep working it I don't know if I'm gonna start on this highlights what but yeah this is sort of a new new method for me but the idea is to not uh not use the wrong paints too many times basically start with the right paints from the very start in terms of brightness that's what i'm talking about don't know if it's going to work or not. How am I doing for time? 7.39. So I'm about a quarter of the way there. If my maths is correct. That is a slightly scary prospect. Actually, it's not too bad. The guy's pretty much base coated, right? So that's like pretty solid. Oh, I just missed a little bit here. It's a bit of bit of that yeah because he doesn't have many gribbly bits these guys are actually really fast to paint up which is sweet um <clears throat> they defector says they can be intimidating because they're true scale a gw hand is three to four times bigger than a weird hand yeah that is definitely a difference and obviously that affects the assembly so much i know Everyone loves assembly, right? Actually, I actually like 
assembling minis, but uh, yeah, <laughs> some of these gremlins have been a bit, um, a bit difficult. That's for sure. Um, but I mean, even even like so, this guy's fingers. I'm not gonna blend them or anything. It's just gonna basically like paint them like they're an edge highlight. But I'm more scared of breaking them off, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> McBluff says, I adore the Malifaux Burns art. I personally don't really play Malifaux itself much yet, although I know the rules more, so play through the breach and read the lore. Oh yeah, so you're coming from like the RPG side of things? Um, I haven't, I haven't read into Through the Breach much, um, myself, and, uh, yeah, but you're loving how, seeing how the art translates to sculpts. They do a pretty good job of it, like, when you see the artwork and then you see the sculpts that come out of it, they're usually not far off, i found, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, where should I go from here? Should I try and get the skin looking good and then try and get the um, cloak looking good? What I'm thinking is I want to try and do the OSL last. So I want to get it all like right, basically. And then try and get the, the light of the magic to come through over it because I figure like you have like the top down skylight and then you have the magic the magic light coming through um, and they they add to each other right and they um, so that's what I'm thinking I'm just gonna put some more blue on this to make sure it's one thing I've learned with base coats is like you think something's colored in, but then you give it another coat, and it's just like the depth of color or something. Just really ramps up. Honestly, that's what's happened to me with McMorning. Wasn't that interested in the character until I read his lore. Yeah, McBluff, yeah. That's, um... Uh, that happens to me a lot from watching <laughs> Defectors um, vids. So the law can really change how I like the character. Like, I don't think I could ever play, well, I don't say that, but she Seamus is so like such a bastard. Makes me hard for me to like uh, play him, I think. Um, the gremlins are mostly just like, amoral like they don't seem to have morality they just do whatever the hell they want which is kind of funny michael coming up to element games yes i am so uh we're moving to south manchester and then i'll actually be working in stockport which is the town where um where element games is for the listeners at home so yeah, I'll be I'll be living nearby and I'll be working like very close to where Element Games is. Which is uh it's gonna be pretty cool. So I could like go there after work. Um some of the guys in the UK Malifaux Discord said that they're gonna start doing Malifaux tournaments there. And they play there like reasonably often. So that's all kind of cool. I'm um I don't know how much how often I'm going to be out of play, but I'm looking forward to being out of play a bit. I like these base colors. Thanks. I'm really enjoying the red. I just want to neaten it up a whole lot because it's kind of messy. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to try and I might go down a brush size. Try and get some control. I'm going to the UK Games Expo tomorrow, which is the big one in Birmingham. And one of the things I want to get is more paints and nicer brushes. So I kind of have this collection of brushes. They're all like, I've got all these brushes and I only use like 
three or four of them that are actually good. And the rest I don't really like. And it's kind of a waste. Because, yeah, I just want... I only need like three or four, but I want them to be actually... Actually good. It'd be nice. So I'm just going to try and go in. I might try and actually blend this if I can. See if it works. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> Gremlin morals a big hat face. Yeah. Pretty much. I uh, I remember listening to the podcast and it's just like, he just smacks them around, doesn't he? And then that's like how he is, uh, how he's in charge. But he gives it to his, um, his son, right? Oh, is, is it his son or his nephew? Son. He defective dice to tell me. In the Sam Lens video I was watching on, on blending, he had like much more thicker paints than what I have. Uh, I don't know if I'm just wasting my time here. But yeah, with my greens, I only have I only have like one good green. The rest are all kind of shitty. Their consistency and coverage is like all over the shop. So I think I'd have better luck blending if I was blending different colors just because the paints I have are not very good in those colors. Anyway. I'm going to go up another level of highlight on the green. Let me just, let me just get a bit more. See, I'm just like going over it again. I just want to really up the vibrancy of the green. This is what I found was the trick, especially with these, these paints are not the greatest. Just need a few layers. Do you have a favorite card character, uh, lore wise? Um, just a favorite character in the lore, I would say, um, just thinking about it, but yeah, I'd say probably Captain, uh, yeah, Captain Zip. I have him, he's the first crew I bought, I haven't painted him yet, but I love how he is so absurd he's so like self-absorbed in like a hilarious way and uh i just find him super funny and then he's like um his the podcasts about him are really good like how he just lets like his first mate get eaten by the cigarette and then the cigarette's like his new first mate he just uses it as a, to threaten his like crew to do shit. <laughs> I think is um is is pretty funny. He's not even like there's no um like it's literally just like a random cilliard, just a catfish. I had to I had to Google what it meant. It's like a catfish just like jumped out and ate his first mate. And the first mate was like pleading with him to to save him, but he was just um, was making a speech or something. Or he wanted to call him captain or something. So he was like, "I won't help you until like you uh um until you call me captain or you know, put your hat on or something." I need to read, listen to it. And while he was arguing with them, the silly just ate the first mate, and then. 
the um uh flip the hat on the seared and then that's his new first mate Effective dice, yeah. Lenny is his son, technically he's in charge, but we all know he wears a hat. Yeah, so that's uh that Summer gave the election to his his son. Yeah, I've watched all I uh, listened to all the podcasts on the Bayou Masters. I really enjoyed it. The whole like I like Ophelia as well, like how she's kinda like a badass and is actually like really good. No, not good. Like she's uh, quite, what do you call it, like, empowered, I suppose, and she's smart, and doesn't take, like, some of the shit, but, like, Captain Ziff, he's pretty funny, but he just, like, does whatever he wants to get famous, basically, where, like, Ophelia is actually trying to look out for her, like, family in the Bayou and shit, that's cool. Dita, I just call them card characters. It's characters like Marlo aren't in the game. Thus don't have a card. Ah, right. Because there's probably the car characters in the RPGs that I don't know about at all. Because I, yeah, I haven't, don't have any of the books or anything. Yeah, so I only know what's in, what's in the game. So now I'm this, because I went so freestyle with my base coat, I have this thing now where I have to actually paint in the shadows a bit so for example like his cheekbones I've just now had to paint in shadows here and I'm gonna paint in shadows uh, in his like eye eye holes to to give him more contrast and obviously I don't have to do this but I am gonna do it because I want it to look good theoretically which is, I guess, a disadvantage of trying to paint like this, that you'll have to fix your mistakes. So I'll take stock at halfway, see how I'm going. I feel like I'm doing well. I feel like I made a good choice with this character because he is uh, very easy to paint. Very few colors and uh, lots of big surfaces. It's quick. But I might get bogged down with fixing my, my lighting. That's what I'm worried about. We'll see. It's amazing, just absolute chaos and irreverent. Yeah, and I liked how he, he stole the ship. Um, and he just like listens to the radio to see if he's like in the news, which is pretty classic. Um, yeah, he's just wild. And I like I love him in like the drop in the piano thing. Um, in his actual like ability, that's super cool. I'm I'm definitely gonna do. So so the reason I haven't painted pen zip. Is because of the iron skeeters, which are cool models, but they're so delicate. And I don't like the flight stands they came with. So I need to make my own flight stands, which I haven't quite figured out how to do yet. And I haven't bought the stuff I'll need. But once I do that, then I will get the, them mounted up properly. And then I'm going to paint the the keyword for sure but uh, I've just been painting Ophelia because the few games I have played have been with her um, so yeah um, I feel like I've done a lot of the screen now Red's going to be the challenge. So, I... Not about the 
this. What are the names of the podcast? Are they like audio dramas or commentary? Yeah, so it's uh, it's called the Breach Side Broadcast. So if you go on Spotify or podcast thing, and it's actually weird has produced these. They're more like a radio show. So they are somebody. So somebody's written the story, and I think the story's in um, some of the books and stuff. And then the, uh, somebody is like somebody else <laughs> is is reading them out, sort of dramatically, I guess. Um, so they're like short stories essentially, and there's tons of episodes now, and um, I don't think they're all in order because there's like chronicles and then there's the other there's I don't know the podcast is a bit out of order, but um, yeah there's like 150 episodes or something and they're essentially all short stories, uh, which is really cool. So yeah, if you are getting into it, Sean, uh, I'd definitely listen to that. And if you ask around, you'll probably be able to, if you just want to like find ones about specific masters and stuff, or you can just uh, listen to them all. I've listened to quite a few now, but not all of them. And uh, they're, they're, um, they're quite good considering they're free. We just like puts them out. Um, but they're really sort of, bring the masters to life because there's like two stories on zip and then he's appears in like a few other of the characters stories so it's it's really good hello joe how's it going are you in the uk because you said evening and i know some of the other guys are in america so if you are in the UK, which part of the UK are you in? <sighs> All right, nearly at the halfway point. How are we going? I think I really, I really need to tackle this red. All right. Really need to have a crack at this red. Got all these Citadel paints and um, Army Painter paints. I can't wait to finish them because I really want to replace them with. So the Citadel paint is fine. I just don't like the pots. I use these stupid coffee stirrer sticks to get them onto my wet palette. Um, but the quality is good. The Army Painter is a bit varying in quality. Some are good, some are pretty shocking. But, um, I want to, I want to get them done so that I can basically start replacing them with a bunch of other paints that I can experiment with actually have informed opinions because I don't really want to go out and say like this brand is great this brand is terrible if I've only tried three brands right seems kind of irresponsible but uh, I mean these reds from Army Painter are pretty nice Some of my other colors from them are not nice at all. Good here, putting the finishing touches on Lady Monster Hunter. Yep, I'm in the UK on the south coast. Oh, nice. I, um, my girlfriend and I, we just went to Eastbourne recently, uh, last week. Two weekends ago um it's really nice it's a bit of a, a bit of a old age pensioner village but the we went for the walk like along the cliffs there and it's like so beautiful 
um, and nice, quiet escape from London. Um, I think this needs to be darker. Darker. I have this issue where if I mix up a paint, I can never like remix it. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I know some people, like if I have a paint on a mini that I've just mixed up one time, I'm not going to be able to go back and actually mix that again perfectly. And once it's all, you know, once you've got a whole bunch of layers and stuff, it probably doesn't matter. But it kind of bothers me in the moment that my first dark red is not going to match this version of my dark red, right? Um, which kind of is annoying. I don't know if there's a trick to it. I just need to practice. The trick is probably practicing, sadly. Uh, that's, yeah. I feel like I'm wasting time. So normally this would all just be the dark color and then I'd be, now I'd be going in with just highlights. I'm just trying to put the shadows back into the folds. But uh, trying to do it fast kind of makes me sloppy. And that's not a great place to be. Because it's... Um, I feel like I'm just making this worse now. For sure. Hmm. <sighs> anyway. Reach type broadcast is just dramatic reading of the stories from the books. The other ones chronicle something. Stories from Weird Chronicles, which is a quarterly magazine that weird used to do and would have short stories they tended to be side stories no not related to name characters from the game but quite good and then they also have another series which has stories from the other side yeah so they have like the three series that's all under the one podcast name which is why i found it a little confusing but yeah it's all good in there But in terms of like, yeah, just getting all this free lore and stuff, it's pretty incredible. Try to keep a running list of paints used in projects I do for other people so I can recreate the screen. But my biggest issue is technique used. As in you, you don't know how you did the technique. Or how you mixed it. This my... Uh, and usually I'm pretty okay at remembering which paints I use. But it's just like the ratios. Stuff like that. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, side echoes. Okay, that's the other side story. So my boss says. Mark says, I'm always trying to improve, so when I go back to a project, the colors are right, but I find it difficult to paint the same way. Ah, oh, right. So, like, yeah, you do a better of a job of it the second time, so it doesn't match. Joe says you keep notes in your phone. That's what I should do. <coughs> um, yeah, I think the good thing about Malifaux is you're not doing a full army, so... And they're all... Every minion is still unique. Like, they're all unique sculpts, which is really fun so that can explain away a lot of like little color differences and things darkness in there you go back to joey so you're saying you go back to and re-listen to all episodes yeah i um i'm just trying to get through them for the first time um, but they are good. It's pretty incredible for just a free thing and the paid voice actors to do it all. You know, it's not just like some guy reading it out. It's like done well, which is pretty cool. Okay. So I'm going to attempt to do highlights of this red now. Which I feel like it's going to take me a very long time. Hmm. I don't want to go quite that red yet. So I just have to take my time with this and be patient. I can't rush it, I think. I, think I just have to. Get in the zone. So defective dice, you go back and read the actual books. Do you have like all the books? Um, you probably do because you do the uh, of your of your channel, right? Um, I did see somewhere that you can get some of the older books off like Drive Through RPG. That's right, and just um, read read uh like for real cheap get the pdfs and stuff which is pretty cool okay so i'm gonna try and fix up all the light on this guy but i feel like all the coverage on that paint was coming from the black that was in the red so when I'm trying to do this red, the more red color, <clears throat> it's like not even, not even working correctly. I should have tested these colors out probably before the stream to see if they actually work or not. Not that I have any other choices of red. Uh, I hope this is going to work. Oh, they're getting there. Really doesn't want to come off the brush though for some reason. Mike is saying because it's such small crews, I can panic paint a full crew before a tournament. <laughs> I suppose it depends how much time. 
takes me quite a while to paint. I'm uh, slow, you could say. I feel like I'm making some progress on this red now. I'm just gonna keep working it. That's what I found with the green. The more you work it, the better it looks. I just don't want it to go too bright. It's probably not gonna be an issue. Such an incredible amount of folds in this guy's cloak though. is uh, normally if I wasn't trying to paint fast I'd probably be enjoying a lot more I do like these sorts of shapes but uh, trying to paint fast does feel the pressure a little bit not that there's any real stakes still I don't want to disappoint you guys I promised that I would paint them in two hours and that is what I'm gonna do I know I devastate you guys if I, if I failed how are we doing for time Okay, so over the halfway mark, got about, can someone do the math for me? Seven minutes less than 60. What's that? Uh, 53 minutes or something. It's probably going to come a point where I'm going to have to give up on the red and just move on to trying to get something on the... Uh, get some more of the the lines in his cloak done. Can't forget about his hat either, can I? So Defective saying Full set just for the collecting sake, but I mostly use a PDF for my videos. They're in Drive Through RPG, and all of Weird Chronicles are on there for free. That's cool. I didn't realize some of them were free. That's. I might pick up some if they're free. That's cool though. From what I understand, they do like a decent job summarizing the lore. Uh, like, does Malifaux Burns give a pretty good summary of like where the world's at at the current point? Or do you really have to go back through? Uh, that's what I want to know. Because I'm. Yeah, I mean, my issue is I don't have much space, so I don't really want to have a huge collection of books. Uh, can you get Burns as a PDF? I presume you can, right? Folds to his hat. I realized I'm holding my breath, which is not good. 
I've watched those videos where they have like snipers and they're like, just relax, like breathe out, take the shot. That's kind of how I feel like when I'm trying to highlight like a little line. I find myself holding my breath and then I think I'm like one of those army snipers in the movies. That's, that's basically what I think. So I would not listen to me for pain advice or army advice. luck with the hour remaining I might have finished a scenic base in that time yeah I usually don't get much much done in a short amount of time either I actually haven't done much basing I really want to do more of that but, uh, Jay says that Burns kind of just jumps right in if I've read the third edition book I might be okay I haven't read the third edition book so, yeah, I might struggle a little bit. I mean, I guess I picked up a fair bit from like various videos and podcasts and uh, things like that, right? I would like the third edition book, I think, as well. <laughs> Burns gives you a snapshot of where each master is at now, and in some cases a bit about how they are affected by the Burning Man. Not a ton of their backstory, though. Right, okay. Does the third edition book have, like, backstory? Or is it just like where they were like two years ago or three years ago when third edition came out? So I've sort of given up on trying to blend this or whatever. I'm just trying to do layers now and get the paint, the highlights sort of in the right spot. So it looks right. I think my issue with the cloak before, I was not feeling very happy with it. The, the light was all messed up and uh, it was looking real weird. It's starting to look more like what it should, which is nice. So, um, hmm, that red was better. Let's see the colors got. Still like lots of areas that I have not gotten the highlights to yet either, but I've long basically do each these big sections. Going on there. Yeah, so I have to think about what I want to do. I want to do the glasses. And this guy. The green needs another layer to be up brighter, to give the contrast there. Um, so maybe I'll do the green next, get the green up again. Be the plan. 
Third edition has a rule book, which has zero lore, but there's also a book for each faction. They said three fairly long stories each, and then card mouse for a few paragraphs summary for its uh, lore. Right, I didn't realize that. I thought the third edition would have lore. In. Okay, well, if it doesn't have lore, then I'm not going to get it, because... You know, obviously, I'll turn off the rules or use the app or whatever. Yeah, so obviously, so there's the faction books. Maybe I'll get the Bayou one. Potentially. How are we going here? There's still... These folds don't matter. Right. Closer now to, to something. Closer to something, that's for sure. It's looking like something. Hmm. I have that issue when I don't know when to stop. And that's what I'm afraid is gonna happen. I won't know when to stop. How are we doing for time? So Chris is saying has about half law. Is there two different books? Is there like a rule book and then like a complete like third edition book, which has like rules and law? Is that it? <sighs> I don't have the time. 23. So I've got about 40 minutes left. Uh, I feel like I should work up the green a bit more now. See where we can get to with the green. Oh, this is a nice looking green. It's very bright. So it has world building in the background. Right. So Try and be really careful and not make a mistake like I normally do. With this bright green. Okay, that's good. I really like this. find it's what I found with highlighting what I've learned is it's usually like this second or third highlight where stuff starts to start looking really good and before that point you're kind of not really sure if it's going to work or not um, 
but once you get the second or third highlight, shit starts to look really nice. That's why I was excited for this color, because this stuff is starting to look really nice. Let's, uh, let's see what this one. Chris, you're working through all the Chronicles. Is that the uh, old bit of the... Po uh, oh, wait, that's the... Magazine, right? Um, yeah, I should get that. Cause, uh, actually, one thing I want to ask is, I so I like Bayou, right? Is there more stories? Because I listened to all the Bayou ones in the podcast. Is there more stories? And those weird chronicles that aren't in the breach type broadcast about the bay they'll be interested in that Dumb question. Why do you put your mini holder on a magnet when you put it out? So my mini holders, they're champagne corks, and I put a uh, magnet on the bottom, a magnet on the top, and this holder has just got a magnet on it. Um, thanks, Michael. Thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you later. Um, so the reason why I have done it is so... I watched a video by Goober Down Hobbies where he made a whole bunch of holders um, out of wood. He got wood dowel, cut it into pieces, and then put magnets in it, which I thought was a super cool idea. Um, so I wanted to do the same thing. The only problem is I don't have any woodworking tools, so I decided to do with champagne corks. From the champagne corks is they're super light so they uh fall over really easy um but if you put magnets on the bottom and then you have like a platform like this it'll hold it and these are like pretty big magnets they're like 10 mils by 2 mils thick so they're pretty powerful and um yeah it just holds it and it stabilizes it and i i really like it most of the time one of these malifaux bases is they're so th uh, there's not much depth underneath them, so it's hard to put magnets in them. So it's just blue tacked on. Um, but all my Warhammer stuff, I've put magnets on, so they just snap on and stuff. Which is cool. Um, and then I have dreams of doing magnetic movement trays and stuff. And I've got like this sort of thing, which is just magnets, so I can put like, have like a little row of them. Not that I really do batch painting anymore, <laughs> so I don't really use that. So it's, I have all these dreams of having a whole magnetized system. I don't use it too much, but I do do that, which I think is really handy. And also my, you can't see it, but I have a shelf here, which is uh, like all my stuff is on it. And it's actually steel. So all these like, um, all these holders just like snap onto it really easily, which is, um, which is uh, really neat because um, it just makes that whole thing a lot quicker. So, yeah, basically, if I didn't magnetize them, these champagne corks would fall over. But I do, I do think to myself sometimes, should I just buy a like a normal paint holder, uh, a normal um, hobby handle thing? You know, like the GW one or like one of those ones, you know, one of the other ones that people talk about that just uh, clamps it or has like double-sided tape or whatever. Um, I might do that at some point because I have these dreams of all these magnetic holders, but I'm not sure if they actually help me. I find these champagne corks are maybe still too small. Like sometimes I like a bit, something a bit more to hold on to. But yeah, that is, that's basically 
the um, magnetic base thing. That doesn't have many facial features. It doesn't have many, like, much in the way of, uh, much in the way of things to highlight on his face. His chin, he's got a pretty big chin. That's about it. Do I think? All right. So to fact, he's saying they're all sh separate stories. Um, send you a list of the ones that deal with gremlins. Yeah, that would be sick, actually. That would be be really good. I'm going to do a little detail now. I'm going to do his glasses. A little bit of metallic. And this decoration. Hopefully. Hopefully this works. is good even if I fail this it's good to try and paint differently from normal I think to breathe out it was Trying to paint a spectacle as best I can do. So you can see how small they are. They're pretty small by my standards. Some paint around his glasses. Nice. Okay. How long have you been painting? That's coming out great for such a short time. I find it impossible to talk and paint at the same time. So, on this guy, I've been going an hour and a half, but in general, um, so I sort of got back into this in 2017, but off and on, so, um, yeah, I painted some carriage run overlords, and then I painted some rune wars. Which is a game by FFG that died hard. Um, and then, so that was probably like 2017, 2018 a little bit. Is that right? Yeah, and then 2019, I would have been back in Brisbane. I didn't paint at all. 2020 was COVID, right? That was the start of COVID, it was 2020. Yeah, so I basically, I painted a little bit in 2017. And then I painted, started painting again in 2020. Yeah, during during lockdown, basically. I got back into this. Because, uh, yeah, so basically I used to live in Manchester. And then my visa ran out. to get to go back home to Brisbane in uh, Australia. Because we were moving and all that. I didn't want to get all the gear and stuff. 
So I just uh, didn't paint anything at all in like sort of 2018, 2019. And um, then I got back into it in 2020, which I was, I was thinking about, but then obviously with COVID, it's like perfect. So I've basically been painting since 2020. And um, I don't paint as much as I could because obviously like YouTube takes up tons of time. Uh, but yeah, I don't really play games that much. Just play like the, the few games of Malifaux. Uh, and that's it. I'm trying to do something that I saw in the artwork, which is like he had like the light reflecting on his glasses. Not sure if it's working, but it's something. I might just cut that green and do another quick bit on the bits that really need it. Um, I, want, I feel like it's not vibrant enough. I find it impossible to talk and paint at the same time. Yeah, so it was definitely easier to talk when I was doing the base coats. That's for sure. It was a lot easier than a bit harder now that I'm trying to concentrate. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I feel like I, when I'm concentrating, I can't really talk either. I do hope to get sort of better at streaming. I'm hoping to make this a regular thing. I want to try and figure out a night that works. Uh, a night that works in our schedules, my girlfriend and I's schedules, and um, sort of do it as a regular sort of thing. Um, maybe something like what I did last night with the the show about what's coming up that what i would like to do is ideally i'd like to do some sort of um something prepared like talking about something going on in malifo and then um or something some sort of hobby topic and talk about that for a bit and then maybe get into just some painting because what i find with streams is i quite like watching um you know tabletop minions and uh his sunday streams he sort of just like talks on a topic for a while he doesn't do any painting on his sunday streams which i quite like because i like to have them on when i'm painting or or whatever so i'm, I'm hoping to have something that's good for people to come back to and listen to uh, later on and not just be not just be painting I know this is just painting but the idea is I would try and push myself um, but yeah also if you guys I don't know if you guys know this channel called Blackjack Legacy he also does a lot of streams like this where he has sort of a topic to a stream and talks about it I like those as well for for listening to while I'm hobbying. I talk about various games and stuff. He's quite into like Mantic things. Which I don't know anything about Mantic games, but it's interesting just to like learn about it. Okay, try my contrast there. I wanna get onto the onto the blue. now so let me just have a quick look at the artwork so we see the center of the flame is the brightest and then it cools off outwards 
So flames are kind of like the opposite of normal light. They're like brightest in the center and stuff. All right. I can do that. So, and it's a bit sort of tealy. Not quite blue blue, it's a bit blue green. So, put down some of that. What is that? Hydra turquoise. Cool. And I've got some, some white. We'll see what sort of color this makes. Hopefully it's something appealing. That's a nice color. So let's get in here. There's uh, this light blue. And get in all these, all these gaps in the swirly magic stuff. Brighten them up in there. It's not very scientific, but the idea is I'll go into the swirl so this light green blue and then come out of it with another another color probably won't leave this dark blue there i think uh I think it's too dark for magic i want a i want a light magic one thing i was watching this ian's a battle video he was talking about how he was really happy with this paint job he did because he stretched himself and he didn't make everything just kind of middle brightness, middle value. He actually had some stuff that was like went down to black and other things that went up to white. And there's actually just a lot of variance instead of everything just being, yeah, like sort of in, in the middle somewhere. And he was like really happy with his paint job on uh he was some sort of chaos space marine i don't really know what sort of variety of chaos space marine it was um yeah but he was really pleased by that and i'd like to do that i'd like to keep the cloak dark red and his his light his this flame thing like very bright if possible Let's see what happens. <coughs> Pumpkin Spice, give us a quick twirl of where you're at. Considering you have a profile picture that is a picture of Huey, I think you're either Brie or Jasmine. So. Put all the colors down. I'm just trying to put all the layers in. Putting that light blue in has instantly made the magic better. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna try and keep working this blue and then really work the red and see if I can do some OSL. This object source lighting. Um, so one thing I didn't mention about with the artwork, what I really liked is the glasses, just a reflection of the light. So I'm going to try and do that and see. But the glasses, the lenses are actually just blue. sort of I'm trying to I'm trying to um, make it glint I don't know if it's glinting it just looks weird maybe <laughs> all right let's
let's keep going with this Huey hair in my paint. Uh, let's keep going with this uh, blue. Add more vibrancy to it. Actually, I know. Hey, Brie. You'd be pumpkin spice, right? So since you've been painting Guild, you've been really pushing your skin tones. And not just using washes. Yeah, I think that's something that I have never really tried to paint a person that's supposed to look like a person with their skin, like, all legit and stuff. I've definitely relied on, like, a red and a brown wash to give me something. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting challenge when I get to it. Don't know how that will go, but um, yeah, we'll see. But I've seen like those people that put up like the photos online where they've just painted 10 heads and they're like so good. <laughs> Some of them. Some of them look so good that I've seen on like mini painting on Reddit. It's pretty like intimidating, but just got to ignore it, I suppose. Don't want to. Don't want to be intimidated by people that are just like know what they're doing. Because obviously, like they they learn it somehow, so we can learn how to do it as well. Just be practice. So one day, one day when I pick up, um, I've got Earl Burns from Captain Zip to paint. He's just a regular dude, so I have to learn how to paint him at least. But one day I'll pick up. Um, Hope Adida is probably the only one from Guild I really like. But uh, maybe one day I'll pick her up and that would be. That would be fun. But I'm sure at some point I'm going to have to learn how to paint faces that aren't just goblins. Scared to look at the clock. Um. Most definitely running out of time. Sure, better painters are great for inspiration and not comparison. Yeah, I think uh, with the same a lot of things is just gonna realize that they they all learnt it. There's no reason we can't. But sometimes I just I just stop looking <laughs> at photos because I just get a bit like. You get that feeling of like, Jesus Christ, I can't believe people have actually done this. So when I go look at something else. But I've definitely improved a lot over my time painting. And if I wasn't YouTubing, I would definitely be painting a lot more. It would be even better. I kind of skipped the step of like actually getting good before starting a YouTube channel. And I decided to just, you know, the old classic, can't do, teach. It's my motto, basically, my secret motto. I don't tell you guys yet. 
but I have still been learning with the models I've been painting. I really wish I had a bigger light though, because sometimes when I'm going around the sky, he's going straight into the shadow. I can't see what I'm doing. So Joe, you're just finishing off Perdita's crew. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the skin there. Yeah, I can imagine it. Like it's just tons of tons of skin on her crew, but a very cool crew. I like Abuela and Papa Loco. They're fun, fun models. Uh, they're sort of a bit like a bit like Bayou models in theme. I think a bit, a bit crazy bit on the edge for the guild. <laughs> hey Neon Caster. For other mini painters, it's all about whether that style inspires you or not, right? Might be super well painted, but is it activating your neurons, you know? Yeah. I I find that a lot with like the grim dark style, like you know, people doing like tons of heavy washes, grime and stuff. It's sometimes it's cool, but I usually don't care that much. And I definitely, I, I think it would be fun to do once or twice. I don't think I could do a whole army of space Marines or of like chaos Marines or whatever with that like super grungy. Um, especially cause like I, I, you know, I like bright colors basically. And especially when you put them down away from you, anything that's not super bright, I find is just gray, black, like it might look cool under bright lights right near your face. But if I don't highlight it enough, I find a lot of stuff for me just all looks gray gray, brown, black <laughs> at, at a little bit of distance. So it's not, um, I can't even see all the, like the little details. So that's, that's one, uh, style that doesn't really do it for me. Um, so no, I need to probably get a bit more knowledgeable about specific painters and their styles and things. I kind of have that whole thing of like, I know it when I see it, I really like it, but I couldn't, I couldn't describe it to somebody basically. I'll just have to browse through stuff until I see something I really like. Same. The more my characters look like toys come to life or escape from a retro video game, the better from Neoncaster. Yeah, I do like a lot of. I like a lot of pastels as well. I like a lot of pastel colors. Like this blue is basically pastel, uh, stuff like that. Vibrant things like the greens and stuff. I think this red works because there's so much other vibrant stuff, but if there wasn't vibrant stuff, it might be a bit, I still, it's like a nice color, but yeah, I wouldn't want to paint dark all the time. Um, how are we doing for time? We've got 10 minutes left. Okay. Should I attempt some OSL? I don't even know really how to do OSL. I've tried it like once before. But as they say, the best time to attempt something new is live. Right? That's what they say, right? They say, do it live. That's uh, that meme. The guy is like, fuck it, we're doing it live. I feel like this is, this is too much. This paint's too thick, I think. You gotta go for it though. You gotta paint bravely. You can't bra paint scared. You tell I listen to 
Make Brave League podcast. It's just going to ruin it. Oh, well, it's just thin paint. Mm. You can go over it. Let's... I want to ruin all this lovely green with my shitty, shitty OSL. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it. less is more, I think. I think that's that's what I'm gonna go for. Less is more. I've never really tried to figure out glazes and stuff yet, so I don't know how to glaze. I think it's something like this. I need to I need to call up Mr. Shy. He's got something really good tutorials. Tutorials. Uh, and ask him how to glaze. <laughs> this looks more like a glaze, I think. Yeah. Hey, Huey. Dogs come out to say hello and sleep in, uh, in the bed next to me. <laughs> hmm. This ruins it, I can always redo the red. Just gotta remind myself that. It's absolutely effed up when I redo the red. I might have effed it up. OSL is my next challenge, Joe. So Joe's saying OSL is my next challenge. Painting up Sonia this month, all I know for sure is glazes ranging in intensity. Yeah, I sort of I get the general idea. I just I've never really Big, like practice the technique of glazing so I'm kind of guessing as to what I'm doing uh, at the moment and I'm probably making like a bunch of technical mistakes with like how to in the paint and stuff and all that um, and but I think with OSL is like the whole thing of like you got your point of light and then the closer it is, the more bright it is, and then the further away, the, the less bright it is. Um, and you just think of it as like a surface of the sphere. Uh, something like that. I think I'm going way too heavy. I think this is not a glaze. I think this is too thick for a glaze. way too thick for a glaze right i've some, seen some people glaze and it's like a puff tint of paint but you know it seems like something that people that don't have five minutes left can do those of us who have five minutes left don't have the luxury of glazing properly we just gotta Probably looks a bit cartoony. 
upgrade that one. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, I should have probably looked up how to glaze before I did this thing where I knew I would have to do OSL. But instead, what probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the stream and then I'm going to go and like watch a bunch of Vince Ventrella videos on like how to glaze. And then I'll be like, ah. And then I will feel stupid. But anyway, I can fix all this. Pretty basic paint job I'm doing this. I'm pretty happy with it. Like, maybe this is a bit strong, but it's uh it's been fun because i've just been loose like i've just been going for it normally paint jobs i'm very kind of careful i guess trying to not make mistakes this paint job i've just been going for it like you know at the start i was just like slapping down paints shouldn't really talk about much but like different from how i'm i'm normally quite careful and I was just going for it and uh, that was a lot of fun so I think that was a good experience and this is enjoyable this sort of random stab at OSL glazing whatever whatever I'm doing too thick. I need to do this more I know it's like this trick of like you know brushing onto your thumb to see how it's coming out and I really enjoy doing it because it's really helpful and then I always forget to do it I think when I So if there's blue here and here, it should be blue. Let's fall off on the blue, it might be a bit unrealistic. Like, uh... Like a lot of blue here and then there's like nothing. Further down. Glazing OSL on a time limit, you're a brave man. Yeah, well, it's just... Good to... Um, try something, and ultimately, you know, it doesn't really matter. This isn't... I'm not even, I don't even have, you know, Wong. I got this actually at the event I went to. I got the 2E Lightning Bugs box. I just like these models. And uh, I just want to paint them. And uh, actually, the other two I'm quite excited about. I really like, they're the more dynamic sculpts, which I'll show you. I'm just putting, trying to put some white into his magic to really, I don't know, make it more. I feel like there's enough thing on his magic here. I think I'm out of time. I think I'm out of time. I'm going to go until it says six past. Tell me when. more vibrant. 
Yeah. So I don't think I actually glazed. I think I just said the word and then just did a layer. Okay, six past. That's it. Maharaja 77. I like the genie from Aladdin color scheme. Is that you, Farah? You're talking to Bree. Yeah, I like this color scheme. All right. Wow, I'm pretty happy with that. It's two hours. That is... Um, God, I try and get a good shot of this. I don't know if the light is gonna... If the light is gonna work. It's gonna behave. Sort of. I went pretty hard with the blue light, but it was fun. So, kind of looks like maybe he's got splattered with some blue paint rather than it being blue light. But there we go. That's two hours of, um, of painting. So I, I probably, I don't think I would call this done. I want to add more contrast into them, but, uh, and probably read up on how to do OSL <laughs> before I keep going. But, uh, I want to add more contrast into his cloak and, um, get the, the folds properly done. So bring up some of those hot folds to more of a red and take, just fix up all the lines in it. But if we look at the, the flamey bit, it's not very even, but I think the light spray is right. Sort of like it's coming from his torch down towards his hat and glasses and stuff. Tried to make it so his glasses are like reflecting the, the light, the blue light. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good for me. I'm no, I'm no like Luke from Geek Gaming Scenics. I can't pump out a mini in 30 minutes like he can. Um, but, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, Joe says, congrats on getting it done, as promised. I've finished a resin base, just a varnish to go. Nice, that's always good. It's always good finishing something. Uh, thanks for saying that. Effective saying it looks great, thank you. I'm I'm happy with how vibrant it is. I just wanna take, I just wanna take the cloak, I think I wanna take the cloak up another level and then I'll be happy with it. And Joe's saying I like, I think the cartoony light look really works with the vibrance. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think the value are just cartoony. So I, I like painting them cartoony and I think it, it suits them. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, um, uh, I'm just trying to think if I can figure out another way to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, maybe. I adjust this. Does that work? That's a bit better. Anyway, that's that pretty cool. So that was fun. I uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And uh, I'm not sure. I have, sorry, I've forgotten the names. But uh, the guy who was just starting to paint and starting with Malifo. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this with a GW Mini, um, for sure. Like, <clears throat> like this guy, Cadron Overlord. But like, look at how many, sorry, there's not much contrast. Look at how many Griblies and stuff he's got. He's just like Griblies everywhere. Every little thing has to be, has to be highlighted and edged and stuff so it takes forever where well, this guy's just like flowing robes 
and then a skin. He's just got a couple like four colors, but it's like really fun to do all that stuff. So next up, I'm really excited about this lightning bug. To be honest, this painting job was sort of like a practice run for this guy. This is my favorite of the lightning bugs. He's got the lightning, the fireball or whatever it is. Bouncing off the ground and he's like pushed into the sky from it. I put in a, I put in a support rod because he is so weak. I didn't trust it at all. So I put in a, um, a support, uh, pin basically, but I'll paint it black. So it doesn't, it's not super obvious, but, uh, this, this lightning bug is awesome. I really like him. And then the chick I showed you before, but she's also funny. She's just like off balance and like the fireballs like coming back to hit her. So that's it. I think all three of these are going to be super fun to paint. She's, I don't know if you can see her face, but she's just like screaming. She's just like, what the hell? <laughs> um, so yeah, these three, they're going to be a lot of fun to paint. I don't have Wong yet, but I will eventually get Wong. And then I'll have three extra lightning bugs, which I, who knows if I'll paint again or if I just give them away or something. Um, yeah. Maharaja, uh, it's magical. Um, yeah, thanks. Sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to figure it out because no one's, pretty sure it's Farah, but uh, no one's confirming or nor denying it. Uh, but thanks for saying it looks magical. It looks like a koala wizard. Um, thanks for that. Don't know if I was going for koala wizard, but I will take it. Show off some of the other stuff I painted. I don't know if I showed it off. This is a Lacroix Youngling. They're fun. This little slingshot and they're two, they're giving piggyback. The dude's slingshotting. It's so fun. This guy. Such a cool mini. Um, I finished off Stumpy. She was fun. This is Stumpy from the Bayou Sada box. And I love that she's got her washing line on the back. She's got the washing line with the socks and the clothes peg and her like spare shirt and stuff. That's so funny. Um, oh, the unpainted one looks like Koala, is it? Is that, is that um, her? She's got a funny face. And the light. One day I'm gonna sort out all my lighting. So it looks cool. I can see her being a koala. She's got the crazy mouse. Uh, so I've been painting up this uh, Lacroix Raider. I'm sort of halfway through him. He's fun. He's got this sort of like light hanging over. So I'll do OSL for him. So I should definitely learn how to do OSL for this guy. He's cool. I've nearly finished the skin. He's got a little bit more on skin to go. Um. Who else have I painted up? I've painted up. Oh, mini down. Um, this young Lacroix. So Ophelia's other, other. Um, what do you call them? The, not the minion. The uh, totem. She's fun. She's just like falling over because of the gun blasting. Um. Oh, these two. So we've got uh, this guy. He's the third long young Lacroix, and he's mooning. Um, mooning, which is funny. <laughs> he's just grinning. He's he's cool. So um, thanks, Bree. It does look good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how it came out. More minis. Yeah, I definitely do need minis. This is a disadvantage of your girlfriend watching your stream. She finds out that you want to buy more minis. But the secret is I never stopped wanting to buy more minis. I just controlled myself. And then this is another Lacroix Raider with his like barrel that's spilling out. Uh, he's fun. No, not her 
Um, right, so you're thinking this guy is a koala. So he's a koala wizard? This one. Uh, I could see how he's sort of koala-like. It's a bit like a koala. Oh, do you mean, do you mean Stumpy? Is Stumpy the koala wizard? Is that it? Is it the tree? Huey. They want a cameo of Huey. Right, yeah. So, yes. Okay, so this model's called Stumpy. Um, I suppose it's koala wizard. So she's got an axe. It's not really a... A wand or anything. Let me get Huey for his cameo. I'll go back to full camera so you guys can see him being all cute. Come on, Huey. Oh, there we go. Say hello. Say hello to the company. Hello to everybody. He's been asleep, so he has. I've just woken him up because he's dead asleep. And uh, he's not very happy with me, I don't think. It's a bright light, isn't it? <laughs> Say hello to everybody. Hello. We're definitely at the, the end of the stream when I'm showing off my doggy instead of painting. <laughs> but, um, he is tired. He was playing a lot today. And so now he's exhausted once he's come down from that. All right, buddy. You want to go back to sleep? You want to back to sleep? He smells like a dog. Say goodbye to everybody. Uh, goodbye. I'm too fat. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> he's a good dog. He's, uh, he's very cute when he's tired. I'm confused. I don't know which one is the koala wizard, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, thanks for everyone coming to the stream. I know it's kind of just been wrapping up the last little bit. So to everyone who's still here while I've been messing about, uh, thanks for hanging out and watching me paint. I've had a lot of fun. It's good stretching, stretching my skills to try and paint quicker. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. So I'm going to call it a night and um, I'll probably post some pictures and then I will probably f touch them up sometime. And then once I've touched them up, I will post some more pictures, I think, and we can sort of compare. But yeah, thanks for hanging out and uh, I'll see you at some point when I turn the stream into a regular thing, I think. Uh, yeah. I'm just glad you don't have to commit Sudoku. Yeah, so am I. Um, I'm glad I got paint all over him and I could, I could, I could say he's done. I could put him on, on the table and I'd be, I'd be happy for that. Oh, well, thanks Christopher. Um, I'm glad you, uh, liked the stream. Thanks Joe. Yeah. And thanks Def Defective Dice, uh, for um, hanging out and, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm currently editing up another Malifaux video and I've got a bunch of ideas for more things and streams and, uh, yeah, there should be more stuff coming out at, um, in the future once it's edited and filmed and all that. So yeah, uh, anyway, I'll see you guys on the discord or, or wherever and, uh, Catch you later. Bye-bye.